Welcome back. The Inland Northwest is fairly unique when it comes to college athletics. We have four Division I schools, which is pretty uncommon for an area with our population size. Each one of these schools has their own distinct history and as we'll delve into the next few weeks, their own distinct mascot. How did these colleges get their mascots and how have they evolved over time? We're going to start down in Moscow to find out how the Vandals became the Vandals. Idaho was founded in 1889, but the Vandals name did not pop up until 1918 when Argonaut student sports writer Harry Lloyd McCarty referred to the Idaho basketball team as a gang of Vandals due to the talent on the squad. The legend is that he said they vandalized their opponent, but that's not exactly correct. When he wrote the first article when he called the team the Vandals, they hadn't played a game yet. The nickname stuck for the basketball team though, and in 1919 the yearbook called them the Vandals as well. By 1921 there was a lot of talk around campus that the school needed an official mascot. However, not too many people were in support of the Vandals, including the football team, who really didn't like the name. By February of 1922, people were getting impatient. Most people didn't like the name Vandals, but apparently they just decided to go with it because after the basketball season, all teams started getting called the Vandals by the school newspaper. Are you tired of looking at newspaper clippings? So am I. Let's get to some pictures. In 1923, the school officially started calling all teams the Vandals, and Empire the Dog was introduced as the mascot wearing a Vandals cape. However, Empire didn't last long as the Great Dane was stolen before the start of the 1924 school year. In 1924, the first illustration of a Vandal appeared, dubbed Baby Joe many years later. He was eventually turned into a statue that the school still has. In the 1930s and 40s, the Vandal was depicted kind of like a Greek god. There are a ton of illustrations of the Vandal that look, well, very unvandal like The 1950s was when the Vandal's mascot got a human name. A cartoon Vandal like this one was displayed on the side of the Student Union. People named him Joe, and it's stuck to this day. But don't think there weren't other iterations. We're going to get around to that in a second. The first time we saw something that resembled the mascot we see on Idaho sidelines today was in 1956, when student Bill Curry and his mom created a Vandal paper mache head. In October of 1982, Bob Vandal, a uh, more portly fellow, was born. Not a great picture, but you get the picture. However, Bob didn't last long because in 1985, Joe Vandal was back, much to the disdain of this cheerleader. They decided that year to also have a female Joe Vandal, aka Josie Vandal. She didn't seem to stick around long either, though. In the 1990s, Joe became what we know today, although there was a brief mm, blunder, some may call it. In 2001, the school introduced a second mascot, Inflatable Joe. He was nine feet tall and so reviled that this blurry photo is one of the only pictures Idaho has of him. In September of that year, the Argonaut ran an opinion piece aptly titled Joe, you blow. Unsurprisingly, he didn't come back for 2002. The school has kept the singular Joe Vandal since. There you have it, the history of the Vandal and how he became known as Joe. As I said earlier, we're going to do this with all of our Division I schools in the Inland Northwest. Mascots are interesting because they provide us a look back in time. Sometimes bad decisions were made, sometimes good decisions were made, and sometimes absolutely hilarious decisions were made. I can't wait to show you this series over the next few weeks. That's it for sports.